Hi, Stone Mason here. Recently, a U.S. federal court declared the National Day of Prayer to be unconstitutional. Despite what religious extremists would like to think, this isn't the government telling anyone they can't or should not pray. All they are saying is that the U.S. government should not and cannot endorse a religious activity. Church and state must remain separate especially if we want to remain the free country we all tout ourselves as. Government endorsed religion is what the Taliban does. It's what the Iranians do, and it leads to the extreme behavior of both those entities. Freedom means the government not telling anyone anything about religion. The question this decision raised in my mind was, well, what exactly is prayer? I'm sure religious dogmatists have a litany of things they like to say about prayer, regarding what it is and how it works, but to someone outside that feedback loop of prayer leading to God and God leading to prayer, it seems obvious that what people call praying falls into two categories, wishful thinking and contemplation. Most religious people really hope, and many really believe, that there is some special supernatural power in prayer that the hand or mind or instrument of God can be guided to help in a specific way by people closing their eyes, bowing their heads, and begging with special language that invokes their God, or in some cases his son, or whatever they imagine their God to be. These prayers usually correspond with items or events that the person has not been able to achieve through his or her own earthly endeavors. And in desperation and fear, or in lust and desire, which in this case they call faith, they beg their God for the things they want. This kind of prayer is worthless and causes the most problems. For instance, some people turn to this kind of behavior in lieu of taking their diabetic child to see a physician and the child dies of an easily treatable condition. Or men whose constant repetition of this behavior allows them to gain enough confidence and determination to hijack airplanes full of innocent people and fly them into buildings full of innocent people. This, of course, is where religion goes the most wrong. When people pray and think they are talking to their God, who then tells them what he wants them to do, which coincidentally is what they wanted to do in the first place, or tells them he approves of their plans to do whatever atrocity they had planned in that God's name. Prayer is used in these cases to focus on the act the person has devised to defend or gain the attention of their God, and it pushes out rational thought and opposing viewpoints, regardless of how correct those viewpoints are, with, the only, with only the dogmatic words of prayer leading the actions of the believer. Of course there is no one they're talking to, no one answering, and no one listening. They're simply carrying on a dialogue with themselves. Hence, the fact that God always agrees with them that they are always doing right by God, and that God approves of their behavior. When was the last time you heard someone say, I prayed to God about what to do about all these damn homosexuals around trying to get married, and God told me that he created gay people just like everyone else, and that I should not hate my fellow man, no matter who God made them attracted to, and he said I should be tolerant and not worry about what others do with their genitals, and allow gay people to get married like everyone else. I for one have watched a lot of Christian television, admittedly for comic relief, but I've seen lots of praying going on and God has never disagreed with the ideas or morals of the person praying and claiming to bring his word. If that person is a conservative, then God's a conservative. By the same token, in liberal churches, God is liberal. When believers pray to God, he tells them what they want to hear. For someone who values thinking, this should be a red flag. The other kind of prayer is simple contemplation, which all of us do, even atheists. We don't call it prayer, and those who believe they are praying to a God uh, do not call it contemplation but we're both doing the same thing. We are engaging in deep thought. 
What the religious dogmatists are doing is simply replacing the word think with the word pray. I've heard religionists, especially Christians, say, I'll pray on that, or we should pray about that. But what they mean is that they should think about something. They should contemplate it. But they are so petrified of their imaginary God that they fear even taking credit for their own thoughts and must believe that if they think of something good while praying about it, it must be God's thought and not theirs. This is very sad to me because these people don't give themselves credit for their own thoughts and by the same token refuse to take responsibility for their own actions, hence the, re the use of religious ass coverage in the form of Satan or God controlling their actions. The imaginable bad results of this kind of thinking are endless. Atheists contemplate things all the time, but we have no illusions about talking to an invisible sky man. So although we are participating in the same activity as the religionists, a human activity called thinking, we are willing to recognize that we're thinking for ourselves, and we are also willing to take responsibility, good or bad, for those thoughts and what behaviors they inspire. Now obviously, for people whose lives are guided, surrounded, and constantly spent generating dogma, these prayers that are actually contemplation are good. They might be the only time a religionist spends using their mind instead of suppressing it. Therefore, I would never tell anyone I think they should stop praying. I think it is a waste of time for them to pray for things to happen or for things to become available to them, whether that means praying that the tornado will not hit their trailer or praying for financial success. But if they need to pray hard to figure out how they should treat their fellow man, I think this is a good use of prayer. They might still not come up with the right answer, but they also might start praying about a lot of things, such as why everything they think about their religion doesn't really work in reality, and how things go on in the world pretty much the same as they would if there were no God. It could be through this contemplative prayer that they begin to see the light of reason and decide to educate themselves and really discover the truth about people who claim to know what happens after we die, a claim that constitutes the oldest swindle in human history. So I encourage religionists to pray. Pray hard and pray long about things you don't understand because you can call it what you want, but thought is what will lead you away from dogma away from self-deception, and away from self-destruction. That's my latest video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to say welcome to my all my new subscribers. I thank you for subscribing. I hope you'll recommend me to your friends. Please comment and rate the video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.